contradictions that may arise for the sake of convenience. As one more example, which doesn't relate to gender this time, the Holocaust. <laughs> This is, this is the, the furry holocaust video. <laughs> In a video previous to this one, I danced around the idea of labeling furries as a minority group. <laughs> it's a loaded term with a dated history Wait, of is this misuse a different video? and questioning, but it's also a label that I've been interested in determining. We as humans appreciate simplicity if we- Why is he wearing- why is he- why the fucking- the balaclava, the white butt? that's so- Why? <laughs> can define a term under strict definitions that can Dude, allow us like a to terrorist. clearly outline boundaries. Tell me, tell me, tell me he does not just look like a fucking terrorist. <laughs> like, oh my god, dude. If it's too about, good. Are we talking about valid Holy criticism shit. or are we talking about discrimination? If we cannot Why, why terms, does he wear it? Why the fuck does he wear it? It looks so, so weird. <laughs> This video goes out to the IDF, we need uh, all the Palestinians, or we will chop you. Then it is fruitless to even know. entertain a conversation on how fuck. to prevent it. For each alternative answer provides vastly different methods of prevention. I understand that labels are annoying. Many people even swear off using them in a yeah. bid to rid themselves of its restrictions. And certain labels can be seen as unnecessary, right, actually even listen damaging to whatever or whoever the label defines. However, something being confusing even to the the point of frustrating doesn't make it any less valid understanding where discrimination stems from and the position that it puts it's groups discriminate in, you get made fun of for wearing a fucking fursuit get the fuck out of here makes the challenge of defeating it far more streamlined and defeating it we need to defeat it oneself of labels people aren't allowed liberated. to make fun of us in on the internet it's a mask with horror and confusion it is no fault of one's own to ignore the socially it, you know what it is it's fucking narcissism you know that's that's what it is because it, it takes it takes a certain amount of humility to be like yeah, I wear a fursuit. Yeah, I have a fursona. Yeah, I like furry shit. So fucking what? Like, like I understand that's weird. I understand that all that shit. Like, people can make fun. Like, it doesn't bother. It's like, it doesn't bother me. Because like, yeah, I know it is fucking weird. Like, who fucking cares? Like, I don't care. I don't care that you think it's weird. I'm going to do it anyways. Fuck you. Like, it doesn't. It's, you're not a minority group. You're not like an oppressed class of people. Fuck off. Labels. You the just, you're just, you're just a fucking. Just you, unimportant. It's just, it's a social pariah. You just get, you just get passed around like a fucking joke who cares for example can be seen as restricting to many people's identity restricting and to combat gender someone can yeah because furries are known for being very limited in their expression entirely. it's not like feasible it's not like they run around everywhere screaming i'm a furry i'm a furry i'm a furry i label everything as a furry dude i love this video game franchise let me turn it into a furry for like being a social concept that is at least biological uh, I understand labels are annoying, but I'm gonna upload a 45 minute cope video where I draw unparalleled comparisons between furries and the Holocaust. Like, non existent. Social like, definitions what? sprout amongst cultures independently from one another. A common misconception is to class alternative genders to the Western male and female as new, thus giving way for a media proposed panic and neophobia. Although, this is woefully incorrect, as gender you know does what? exist. When Republicans start passing laws that make it uh, punishable by death to wear fucking fursuits, okay, maybe I'll fucking sympathize with it a little bit more. But it, for like, it's in history which diverses you're, from you're just being made fun of on the narrative. internet. That's it. In turn, labels of gender make sense. So eradicating such a concept would not only go against history, but it would conflict with people's culture. Looking at it from an outsider's perspective, these definitions. Oh my God. He actually, he actually thinks it's like a part of his identity. He actually thinks like, oh no, it's not a hobby. It's literally what I am. I am the furry. I am a, I am a furry human. Like, like, what? <laughs> Easier for someone to identify. You just like a thing. Identify a problem and minimize stigma on a societal level. If we know what a thing so is. So what if I travel a little bit as long as I get my bag, I don't care. Thing, <laughs> then we can properly it out, address yeah. the issue. Furthermore, the specificity of labels can create contradictions. A label could contradict the actual definition Dude, of honestly, that name. Or the act of he's he's already he's already kind of working from a downhill point of view. Like he's already he's already got minus points for me simply due to the fact he's British. So he's got he's got a bit of a way to work up, honestly. Giving something a label them. could actually contradict the 
the label Karl Marx, itself. Let him cook, For example, yeah, a gender, which refers to someone who does not identify with having a gender. So a label for this person's gender is to say that they don't have a label for their gender. Linguistically, it kind of creates a paradox. Perhaps it's implying that the label of a gender is true yet poorly worded. Not that I can propose a better alternative. I like to see the label as a form of revolt, to act out against the unnecessary nature of gender yeah, and Angel, act as my just profile a person picture, yeah. on Earth. Dude, it's, like, a, it's actually... <laughs> I like. It sounds like he unironically thinks his drawing is him. Like, no, that's me. That's literally me. I'm spiritually that. Like, it's so fucking, it's so funny. Cause like, I re like, every time I get confronted in like VR chat or something like, it's like, oh, you think you're a dog. You think you're an animal. I'm like, no, it's just a fucking, like, it's just a little persona. It's like an internet persona thing. That's it. Like, But like this guy literally thinks he's his persona. I like guess, like frankly, what? Sounds badass. Transphobes be quivering. But in general, labels are a form of convenience. She we use them cringe. to simplify uh, other. Existing I respect it when it's zen, when it's like the zen stuff, like reaching a zen mindset. Because like I, I kind of sympathize with that a little bit. Like the whole um, because I, I just have a belief about the universe. There, there is a natural balance to the universe and stuff like that. Like in that sense, it's sort of like a spiritualist kind of territory. Like I would say I'm, I'm fairly spiritual in that sense like I, I feel like there is a natural balance to like the universe right i believe in that like i don't believe in gods or deities or anything like that but a natural balance like stuff like that but like this guy literally thinking like no i am my persona i'm ethereum like terms that may be no, too complex cringe. or overly complicated into shorter more concise definitions in turn it's a part of my identity label, it's who we I should am. consider any possible i would not be me if i wasn't a furry for the sake of convenience as one more example which doesn't relate to gender dude when time, i when i realize <laughs> Or we're just jumping right in, dude. Just head first. Fuck it. Why not? <laughs> dude, as I was saying, like, when I came out as a furry, nothing about me changed. Like, nothing, nothing did. I'm, I'm the same person I was before I realized I was a furry. Or not realized, but before I was like, you know, I'll embrace this furry culture shit. Discord messages where he was coping about the truth. No, I didn't. It sounded hilarious, though. What, what, how does he, how does he, how does he segue into this? Huh? too complex or overly complicated into shorter more concise definitions in turn to create another label we should consider any possible contradictions that may arise uh -huh. for the sake of convenience as one more example which doesn't relate to gender this time the holocaust like how do you how do you how do you write that out and like be like no nah, yeah that's that's a that's a that's a normal thing to bring up like All right. Which I'm now realizing I'm doing the most clappy thing ever. You know, making a video about furries and only three minutes in, immediately diverging into talking about a mass genocide. My ability to string to get a loosely related topic. Dude, is so wait, so he knows he's stupid. like reaching. Anyway, the etymology of the word is derived from both Latin and Greek roots, forming the compound word holocaustum, which can be interpreted through English equivalent holocaust. Breaking the word down into its components, we have holo, meaning something whole or in then costos meaning burnt it's not that hot, deep why is he being of these dude. terms can be interpreted as entirely burnt or something wholly burnt up essentially holocaust can be used as a suffix to describe a mass loss or total destruction of lives by use of the phrase the holocaust we are often referring to the jewish holocaust which we are distinguishing from other terms such as the armenian holocaust a coexistent term which ran alongside the far more um, what about armenian the palestinian genocide, holocaust excuse me sir headlines around the time of world You're anti palestine at the time of these headlines the word holocaust had no connotation to the jewish population that was something attributed Turkey to the Tom term in lives the to make me after. suffer <laughs> dude what, what? Can all he did to say the video was cringe like the word amplifies or minimizes he's literally a narcissist or magnitude of its implications for if you make the comparison to an event being an example of a holocaust then you are making a direct comparison to the genocide of jewish populations redefining the word under a new magnitude to how we interpret the phrase now I'll note that I left out several Dude. other factors such as religion.
religious influences. She, all he did was just make fun of you. My example. Like, Still, early intentions of this label were to make it give the genocide a Is this guy's kiwi farms? Yeah, literally. In order to highlight its what importance. The fuck? Religious undertones to the label are something that is frequently ignored in modern times. For many feel that it elevates the very human issue into one of divine importance. When in actuality, it may be more fitting to view Nazi soldiers and Jewish victims for what they truly are, human. Thus grounding the event in reality and recognizing that people are actually capable of these types of things. In a way, this can be seen as reappropriating the label, something that we've seen by many minority groups when derogatory terms are worn as badges of honor. I'll leave a link to two papers in the description. What, like the what? Appropriation of stigmatizing like what? Labels, Say it. And Say it. Like what? Oxford University Press paper what? On the Holocaust. What slur is being reclaimed by, by, by a group of people to mean, you know, something that it didn't use to? Like what? Can I, I'm a I'm a visual learner. Can you can you give me an example, Clef? What kind of word are you referring to? I just said. This paper features a far more in-depth explanation of religious influences that I mainly brushed over. It outsets off this line. Language is really a reciprocal tool. It reveals, and at the same time, it is revealing. We know through its also made a video on this guy recently. You might watch that, honestly. And societies as we know them. Hopefully, my I want to see the bad dragon video though first. Some insight into all the intricacies which go into labels and their effects. Dude, come labels on. aren't chosen hastily but through precise calculated decisions that consider possible effects and consequences these laws of language will become useful as we progress through this video many of them will affect our judgment on how we label certain concepts they tell us that any slight nuances and judgment lead to great consequences and therefore have to be made with increased caution i've yet to even introduce a key social aspect to the labels which target the use of pre-existing labels themselves a topic that we will arrive to later in the video but hold on how does this relate to furries? Well, quite simple. Really. It doesn't. For over 40 years, <laughs> That's the neat have part. established it doesn't. themselves as a subculture of society. For almost an equal amount of time, the fandom has made its way into ethics discussions and debates on whether they should be accepted, exiled, Sex or with changed. The furry this muckers? hatred what? has evolved and developed over time, certainly given the decades of time to age, and its impacts on the community cannot go understated. The fandom would be unrecognizable if it weren't for the misinformative news journalism and the negative... No, it wouldn't. It would be the same fucking thing. What does he does he really think those like Fox News segments are, like where it's just like look at these furries aren't they so weird? He, you think that literally irreparably damaged the entire fandom? The fuck, dude. We don't. Here's the thing about furries. We don't need Fox News's help to to destroy the fandom. We do that on our own. <laughs> like. So much retarded shit happens in the Phantom all the fucking time. And it has nothing, has fuck all to do with, like, other people outside of the Phantom. It has everything to do with people inside the Phantom doing crazy fucking shit. And then people being like, well, I don't want to call it out because I don't want to start any drama. Like Public reception. If we were to take this misinformation and all this negative stereotyping, we should ask what position... Like, what about Rainforest? Was that mi was that misinformation? Like, Rainforest happened, dude. Like, like, that shit was is crazy. Is this worth the effort or is it a fruitless endeavor leading to Like, you, you, can't, you can't point to something like the, the fucking... The, the horrific tragedy of Rainforest and be like, ah, oh, yes, when people covering that, that makes furries look bad. No, furries make furries look bad. That's the part that you're missing out. Furries make furries look bad. We don't need anybody's help. Jim Crow all over again. Yeah, literally. Indifferent to its conclusions. Yeah. For the passing moment, I'll remove any personal so connection tweet. to the story. I don't want right, my own personal second. experience as a furry to cloud my judgment. For now, I'll employ past studies. This local thesis by the University of Waikato takes yeah. an exploratory analysis Wait, of that? the suicidality, anxiety, and depression amongst furry populations. It has a sample population consisting of 1,249 self-identified furries. Thus, I believe I'm borrowing from an adequately sized sample population. The topical focus centers around the male minority model of stress, whereby the mental I'm health of a minority group is defined by key factors of risk and protective processes, something which has gone seldom addressed in previous and even future studies. For this thesis, it was takes published forever to back load the in chat. 2018, mental health is a historically under-addressed topic, and that theme is all too present in furry culture. That is apparent when considering the overall lack of studies and action of prevention despite decades of known issues. The male minority 
model or stress, or as I will call it for the rest of the video, the Maya model, targets stresses such as isolation, rejection, concealment of identity, stigma, and other processes which inhibit one's ability to exude oh, happiness. Oh, All of these you, processes yeah. combined create the total oh, risk towards okay, a particular super, group. Yeah. That is then compared to any protective factors such as a sense of community and support group, or any processes that counteract any apparent risk factors. It should be noted that this method doesn't right, recognize go, much individuality. You. Access to support is one example. It shouldn't be said that all furries are treated oh, wait, no. equally was... as all furries have okay, distinct no. social well, environments. I'll make you a, mod too, a furry no. living in one area may have access to the support group whilst another furry may not. With that out of the way, we can analyze the first right. factor, risk. Just one example of risk would be assault or public harassment. Say, for example, being verbally assaulted on the street or even stoned on the street, which can cause paranoia. When paranoia the fuck has a furry been stoned in the street? The fuck? All right, hold on, let's see this tweet. <laughs> what the fuck is this? What did he mean by this chat? Turkey Tom exists to make me suffer, but that's the story for it. What? what? This is some tipster ass response. I probably have to consider the way we could improve the fandom. Oh, now, now, you, probably, probably, really, you probably should consider. Yeah, fucker. What do you mean? There's some fucking huge problems in the fandom. No one fucking talks about it. The, the hypersexual, the honest, it honestly comes down to the hypersexuality. Uh, institutionally, there could always be ways to improve cons a lot. Yeah, like banning minors from it because nine times out of ten, they're like really sexual and degenerate. Um, start from moving fetish uh, content would work. Not sure that'd be a good idea. Sex positivity is pretty important. There, the, the suggestion is maybe we shouldn't have like diaper fur fetish stuff like on a fucking huge ass banner as people are walking into like conventions. They're like, no, but sex positivity is a good idea. Anyways, why do, why do people pick on furries so much? Dude, furries have such a bad reputation. I hate Fox News. Fox News makes us look bad. Like, <laughs> like dude. I understand the idea uh, on paper of removing activity that is deemed socially unacceptable, but often... No, it's just keep fetishes in the bedroom. It's not anybody's business. Social politics with deems uh, such as can be uh, healthy things. I'm saying it like it is. I I'm saying it like this as this was the primary issue with the Burned Furs Initiative. I don't even know what the fuck that is. This is cringe. Anyways. <laughs> so stupid. What's rainforest? You know, I don't know. The same street again. In Sex the same positivity. Clothes, towards the like, I get, I get, I get, like, not wanting, like, you know, like, oh, I should be able to, like, you know. Sex positivity, in my eyes, it's like, oh, like, go out in public and hold hands with your boyfriend and kiss him. Like, yeah, that's fine, you know. Or just being, like, um, being, being open about your sexuality and stuff like that, you know, like, because... Who, who, who fucking cares, right? But, like, when it comes down to fetishes, you know, very specific things, like, that's nobody's business, right? Why, why are you trying to make it everyone's business? Like, oh, yes, I love playing with my own shit. I get off to it. Like, no, that, that shit should probably, um, that shit should probably, you know, not, probably not, right? Well, people, Probably this can be interpreted as almost internalized stigma. Like you have that. experienced a form of risk and internalized your view on safety and your place in society. Mass examples could be bomb threats and marches outside furry conventions, which is a place supposed Rarely to resemble community happens. and safety. Take for Rarely happens. Are you Midwest fucking kidding me? Gas attacks. This purposeful chlorine gas leak led to the hospitalization of 19 right? like, furries. No one is presently certain on the exact culprit of this attack, although a few theories have surfaced on who may it was probably other furries let's be honest let's be fucking honest it was probably other furries may be responsible either way for an event like this to occur it proves at least someone is uncaring on the general safety of furries as they collectively meet at one of the largest conventions Existing, thus paranoia uh, can instill itself into anxiety on further content, attendance baby furs, for attacks or threats towards public yeah, safety literally. in a very famous clip sporting over 6 million views on YouTube reporter Mika Brzezinski for MSNBC's weekday morning broadcast struggles to understand the concept of furries after reporting on the MFF gas leak 
essentially turning the event into a comedy, which under most circumstances would be Because it is! However, the irony is not lost when one reporter is directly telling the camera the police are treating the event as a criminal investigation, whilst the other two are laughing and treating the situation as a joke. As host Joe Scarborough says... Well, then play it. Then play it. If they're really doing that, then play it. No. One can picture the effects on Furry Wait, why didn't confronted the... with an apparent why purposeful gas attack in a comedic level event by famous reporters on live television, only to be told that they wish they had never learned of furries, which calls to... Did anybody fucking die? No. He's acting like this, this was literally like a terrorist attack. Another aspect of risk. Isolation. When general Several populations about are people unwilling to on. even consider furries Dude. or provide any trace amount That's of That's just sympathy, furry discrimination. recognized can exhibit isolation and ostracization. According to fur science, ostracism is a fairly common experience, which is then compounded upon by the failure I would imagine you having, like, you being like, I really like anthropomorphic animals and I, like, this make it my personality. That would be like, yeah, you'd probably be ostracized to or something. To hide one's great, identity right. in a bid to avoid such ostracism or isolation refusal to being a furry is literally my identity why am i being ostracized or even loved ones participants in the waikato study only reported comfort in disclosing their it's not just a hobby on furry friends 71.8 percent of the time 57.6 i'm a, I'm a somewhat furry human being disclosing this information to loved ones it's the same and thing as being black five percent for family 36 percent for non-furry work colleagues and 25 percent for non-furry bosses and supervisors internalizing this is an example of a mental stressor incidentally opening up about this furry trait can cause significant damage in perceived social status and in certain environments opens would, one yeah, up to the yeah. possibility of bullying exactly how prevalent Dude, this problem is this is stupid because i literally go out in public i have like a i have a shirt that i got at a furry convention and it has furry shit on it i i've been wearing it for like um I went to it, I think, 2021. Yeah, 2021. I've been wearing it since 2021. Uh, sometimes in public, nobody has said fucking anything. I've never, I've never been, I've never been bullied. I've never been picked on. I've never been scoffed at. I never got weird looks or anything. Nobody cares. Is, like, is for lack of a better term, grim. There is significantly higher rates of bullying amongst furries than general population. In fucking like Fur school, sure. One point seven percent of furries from like a high school, like from yeah. The ages of eleven to eighteen. People Wakedo get picked on for like to fifty point four percent of furries. All kinds of fucking dumb ass shit. Some form of bullying. Normal populations provide a range of estimates, anywhere from between nineteen to thirty plus. But typically, estimates I found fall somewhere along the line of twenty to twenty five percent of general students experiencing bullying. This means statistically the rate in which furries experience some form of bullying is two to three times higher than the expected level. Worse more, the frequency and severity of this no, bullying has also distinctly increased. Waikato suggests that 16.5% report being physically bullied a great deal, whilst typical students fall somewhere at about 6%. It's important to make a distinction between general bullying and specifically targeting the furry community. Thankfully, the Waikato study also What's the fucking difference? 37.9% reported being harassed specifically about being a furry and 10.1 percent reported being harassed a great deal from these statistics we've created again wait how can you up. actually know so the difference wait what internalize anguish and isolation opening up results in physical endangerment systematically physical and you got picked on in fucking high school in order to bro. sustain a notable Holy quantity shit. of systematic oppression the sky is falling referencing politicians and policies that affect furries either directly or collaterally let's examine where when what direct point in her distaste for it's furries. so bad the yeah too infamous name candace taylor in the afternoon of may 14th 2022 in the city of buffalo new york shooter peyton gindra i'm not even trying to be a pick me like like if, if he actually made good points i would i would literally agree i have nothing i have nothing to earn i i gain nothing from literally agree with agreeing with him because i'm literally like a furry right and i disagree with like a lot of commentary bros like crowded supermarket in a predominantly black neighborhood injuring three people and fatally wounding 10. the target what does this have African to do with furries Americans. gindrin was a self dude what what is what the fuck <laughs> described white supremacists and held many neo-nazi opinions the shooting was a tragic we had one gas attack that happened at a furry convention in 2014 and nobody knows the motive this is not the same thing as a fucking mass shooting targeting black people 
in yet another <laughs> instance of black <laughs> discrimination on the streets of America. In the days following the shooting, Republican candidate Candace Taylor would call attention to the furry art displayed on the shooter's phone, which can be seen during oh, the live yeah. shooter held. With this <laughs> oh my Candace god, okay. That it was oh, that's what it has to do in furries. That caused this shooting, but mentally ill furries. Alt-right personality and ex-rapper and bounty hunter Stuart Peters would tag onto this debacle, stating, a gun didn't do it, a white supremacist didn't do it, a sick and demented furry did it. When Candace Taylor <laughs> is elected governor, Georgia will be furry. Yeah, but nobody furry. agrees. The nobody, hold the fuck up. Why can I pause? Extremely powerful and but nobody actually agrees. These are fringe fucking retarded far-right fucking reporters. Like, nobody actually thinks that, oh, no, yeah, it was totally furries that were... No, he was a white... He targeted black people. It was He was a white supremacist. Like, yeah. Like, that's, that's the fucking... Motive, that's a clear motivation for the shooting. Furries had fucking nothing to do with it. Motivating tweet. That's really personal to me. I quoted in the mirror. Are you really? Is it? Are you really getting up in arms about white supremacists not a fucking approving you? Like get the, the fuck furry out of here, days dude. are over. So when I'm the furry governor. cabal, public yeah. Schools, but academics, dude. not fairy tales. That last excerpt on public schools stems from a compounding series of rumors in Was, the last uh, few years, <laughs> claiming that schools. You know, have you know how like DGG has like the Dali bond. There's there's got to be like a there's got to be like a furry thing for that the needs of furries now i know that i said previously that i was going to remove Al any Yiffa. personal connection to these stories but i actually have a fairly interesting account of some of these rumors my mother is a marketing consultant so therefore she meets and converses with a lot of people over our area as a marketing tactic but also because my mother has a heart of gold sometimes she'll uh peyton coincidentally had saw the martha speaks pick when he opened his discord she didn't intend on that showing up Okay, so he's not even a furry. So he's not even a furry. I guess I'll take your word for it. I don't know for sure. And despite but... never bringing up furries and her job having nothing to do with public schooling, on multiple occasions by people who probably have a brain, have brought up to my mother if she's heard about the kitty litter box in schools. Apparently that rumor must be going around again. And I thought we snuffed that it one out was. years ago, but no. This is just a repeating instance that pops up in conversation. It was, yeah, it was a stupid fucking rumor. Like, it, it wasn't, it was founded to not be true. Like, like it's a fucking, it's a funny, weird story like we did just a garo shadow scale i thought his channel was base my judgment was far off yeah because i mean furry furry's like it's like 50 50 something it's 50 50 sometimes they could be like really normal people yeah. and other times they could be like complete fucking losers like a station you know. with some people here every time my mom comes home and she's like I heard that one rumor about the kitty litter box again, and it's so fucking funny. And that rumor made itself in the politics. Oh, so it's well, funny. Wait, so how is it discrimination? Like, it, Bruce it's Bosselman funny. Explain it for me. I'm a little shocked, I guess is what I would put it. It's called something called furries. If you don't know what furries are, it's where school children dress up as animals, cats or dogs, uh -huh. during the school day. They meow and they bark. And they interact <laughs> barks and owls and chat. Barks and owls. And now schools are wanting to put litter boxes in the schools for these children to use. How is this sanitary? Humor and comedy How is this sanitary? Calling a spade a litter spade. boxes are this actually profoundly sanitary. Obviously. It is misinformation out of the mouths of politicians. But it's also calling to attack an environment of a school that is Sonic largely Fox is supposed one of the, to be Yeah, he fuck, I fucking hate Sonic. Sonic Fox is... Sonic Fox is fucking cancer. This dude, yes, he's fucking obnoxious as fuck. A safe space where they should have the freedom to education without fear of discrimination. If misinformation can be so plentiful that it can occur in our politicians... So plentiful. It's, it's Bible-thumping evangelicals and far-right fucking uh, wignat fucking reporters. Like, you're never going to get a fair representation from them. Most people just see, like, furries as, like, oh, it's like a weird like, like little fringe hobby thing or whatever. Like, what does that mean for the general public and schooling? Thus asks a general question on misinformation about furries. Where did it come from? Why does it happen? What is furry hate? Why would this community in particular get hate, but others are spared? We can look at furries today and I... Why do you think it's so exceptional? Why do you think... Why do you think... Dude, when... Before Warhammer became this, like, fucking cultural phenomenon that it is now, do you think people maybe got fucking picked on for liking it? <laughs> or D&D &D. what about D&D &D? like way back in the day before D&D &D became mainstream fucking D&D &D people they got dude they literally got called like satanists and shit like that they were like referred to as satanists and fucking devil worshippers and stuff like that and look at D&D &D now it's this big cultural phenomenon same thing with furries 
Same thing with furries. I mean, people still think D and D shit's cringe and fucking weird, right? But who the fuck cares? Identify many sources of misinformation and negative stereotypes about furries. But there has to be a point of origin or initial motivation for why these attacks happen. The answer may just be with the creation. They think and it's the weird. That's the motivation. They think it's fucking the weird, and they're like, or they have like a religious reason as to why it's like it degenerates. It's not God. God would not watch this happen. Comic and science fiction scene. Back then, you watch the Incel Revolution video. D and D was looked up uh, as satanic ritual. Churches condemned the game. Yeah, literally. And then look at it now, like like nobody cares, right? Like D and D is like, oh, it's like a thing, it's like a hobby, right? Existent, but far it's less abundant than what we know today. You couldn't simply Google your favorite anime. I mean, you couldn't Google anything at all. With this need to fill a gap in the Western market, people began trading no, love these shy, love shy, that's what I was on tape. Like love then shy people started to realize, hey, we're really forming our own thing here. So a group of this about video. five guys, notably Mark Melino and Fred Patton, decided to form the cartoon slash fantasy organization. Here, they could watch these animations in a small group. Animations oh, which shit, often shared a common ago? motif Man. of these anthropomorphic animals, like a dog no being out. placed, time had these animals gain their popularity. There was a desire to step away from the conventional superhero versus bad guy tropes, and an industry of funny animals was born. Ampho animals in settings which were natural human aesthetics. In time, they began to form a sort of community of their own. It expanded into Dude, animals, not just- It's actually so crazy how quickly it became sexual. In the furry fandom. Like if you watch the if you watch the uh the down the rabbit hole video, it's actually insane how fast became sexual like holy shit standing up from time to time like wally coyote but animals representing people drinking dating working they were pilots in spaceships they were gangsters they were just like people a real modern use of amphro animals as a stand-in for human hey. expression discussions were, were being bro. made new people were coming in and expressing they gratitude for the art bro. showing their own works he and a gangster he a straight had shooter made. something had clicked here like magic people were turning to this media and turning fast eventually overcrowding the comic book the science fiction and the anime conventions funny animal enthusiasts needed to be moved to their own rooms and parties which eventually got the colloquial term furry party we were not only born from a space that was very geeky and weird we were born into a space that was very queer the expression that this fandom promoted paralleled the expression of people's true selves a tradition oh which God. stands up all these decades later Each yeah like it's, 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 it's a it's a it's a it's a form of art yeah, like it was a way it was a way for people to represent themselves like okay a big fuck like it's not it's, it's not the same like is built on degeneracy. I'm not sure why some furries are surprised people would also Yeah, literally. Nation of the founders, the offshoots from conventions to organizations to parties. Well, like some like that like that costume groups. that you just saw. That was fucking cool. That fucking cosplay thing, that costume that 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 was fucking awesome. Like for the furries can make cool shit too, right? Like but it's not like but like you have to understand like a, a fringe niche hyperfixation on a very specific type of art is always going to be like ostracized and seen as weird right of a slightly less smaller group furries in this era i find this and like plus the sexual shit on top minority. of it like especially the that minority may not be very popular but its etymology is fairly straightforward it is a minority group that makes up a larger minority the struggles of queer identity and expression, the homophobia that plagues the world today and definitely plagued the world back then, all branched over into furries. Our problems and the way that society Dude, I'm always going to compare it to something like D&D. &D. Like what what it, what about furries is anything fundamentally different from like something like D&D? From the homophobic tree when it comes to initial furry hate. Like are are D&D are D &D fans are they are they on a press class or deviancy? And this can be tied back to homophobia and transphobia. The idea that gay and LGBT are not but sexual deviants who sinned against God. This has led into a fix that we even see today. Dude, but we have LGBT though, it's people true. having a perceived threat to children. Furries too share a similar fate. This news broadcast from 2007 on WAFB Channel 9 begins with an especially egregious opening line. They are furry and perhaps up to no good. Might want to watch your children around these characters. <laughs> this continues forever. Dude, how can you see that and not laugh? Come the fuck. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's like both the furries and the fucking the the uh the fucking news segment. Like, <laughs> how can you not find that funny, man? 
The glass ceiling broken, yeah. Broadcast. With insinuations so disgusting that I'm surprised it isn't a So disgusting, I'm offended. Such sentiments were shared across broadcast. I don't care. I'm a very I don't care. You could be even slightly oh my God. as positive, sowing the seeds for further discrimination to come. Discrimination, oh my god. This perpetual furry it's just like black people, bro. To insinuate that all furries had a universal belief that they were the animal of their persona. This is You really literally honest. think that though. You think it's a part of your identity. You unironically think that you unironically think you are your persona the most sense to those attack helicopter jokes on trans people and it's a particular Bro, what? between furians and furries furians being a separate subculture it's of just like black people internally for reasons either psychological or spiritual identify with a species that is not human. It's just like this the holocaust oh my god identity or even religion for example it's the same thing there are other cases the conflation between groups of furries and furians are plentiful and ongoing particularly in media resulting in confusion and stigma occasionally this confusion is made purposeful for People less understanding of furries and Therians go hand in hand, though. Like, it's like, so people in pagan like naturally, Therians are well, not all furries are Therians, but Therians, like, I would, I would, you know, 100% of Therians are furries, okay? Stick like, to a group who want to accentuate such confusion. Each example of discrimination is why many would class furries as a sub minority group, a contingent minority to the LGBT. It's a hobby. True and stands correct today. The majority Animal of the furry Smith population kid, he doesn't identifies talk as about, LGBT, yeah. thus transphobia and homophobia are presented towards furries as well. Although True. this has some flaws, furries have this rare characteristic that pushes the boundaries of sub minority. Let me explain. Oh my God, we're we're, we're, we're we're a minority, but we're more than a minority. We are just so special and unique. I fucking hate furries like this so much because it makes us sound so fucking narcissistic and loserish. But I mean, we are kind of losers, but still. Like, it's not that deep. It's just you like to dress up as an anthropomorphic animal. You like the art, artistic expression of it. You love, like, for me, I like furry shit because human characters are fucking boring. That's why I like furry shit, okay? It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be, like, how this guy's fursona is. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, how my sona is. It's like a shark. I like, uh, in my room right now, I have, like, Godzilla posters. I have, like, Alien versus Predator. You know, I have, like, you know, like, I like non-human shit, right? It's not that deep. It's just, I like the fuck. I just, humans are boring to me. They could be robots and fucking, you know, megazords or whatever the fuck. Like, I don't give a fuck. I think that shit's cool. Like, that's it. Instead of just homophobia, it would make it very hard for LGBT individuals to be anti-furries or present homophobia within the fandom. Many fans of this channel will know by now that homophobic furries do exist. So there are likely more Dude, forces at play here. Funny Why story. do furries experience hate to the extent in which they do? Undoubtedly, the because most we're important fucking weird. And factor would Mom's be homophobia. Exorbia. I can't ignore our roots. A large proportion of hate comes with the territory of a sub-minority group, as can be identified through old sources of media. What distinguishes furry from the LGBT community is in large part due to social media. Here, furry hate has morphed into its own form of discrimination. Like a mutation of- He's saying it's worse than homo- It's- What? He's acting like it's- <laughs> What the fuck? homophobia in a sense. You can connect the dots back from furry hate to homophobic ties, but they are distinct just enough where both groups can- Okay, no, he's saying this the same thing. It sounded like for a second he was saying, uh, Furry hate is worse than homophobia. Like homophobic what? furries it's the same or anti-furry LGBT. What stands out to me the most is zoophilia. Something you'll notice is that in older television and recorded history, most claims typically literally harm yeah. to children and sexual deviancy. There's little mention of actual animals or any harm towards them. That rhetoric is more of a recent phenomenon, or at least it saw a considerable rise in the internet age. That is just one example that separates furry stigma from homophobia. Dude, Why like, might this be? Okay, well, I've been called a zoophile literally just purely on the basis of furry and you just purely on the basis of being a furry and you know what i do i just don't react and i'm like okay whatever like i, just, I don't i don't give them a like when, when people say that to you they're fishing for a reaction right if you get up in arms you get offended you're giving them what they fucking want right i, I don't i don't care right oh i disapprove of you and your lifestyle like okay whatever like
Yeah, it's only stuck in the 1800s. What drove this shift towards zoophilia and newer forms of anti-furry rhetoric? Well, nowadays, social media can easily push people down rabbit holes of misinformation. Think Pizzagate and It's because of the things other YouTube furries do, by the way. Kate. That's, that's the part in this video that he's ignoring. A lot of people get bad impressions of the furry fandom, not because of the media. It's because of what other furries fucking do, and they post around on the fucking internet. And that shit gets picked up by, by people doing the cringe compilation stuff, and they fucking spread that around, right? So... Like you can't you can't act like furries are entirely blameless for the reputation that we have. Like we're not. There we absolutely are to blame for the way that people fucking look at us and perceive us. Absolutely. Which can very easily suck people in with progressively more dangerous information. Dangerous information that is both If you want if you want people graphic. to stop if you want people to genuinely stop calling us zoophiles, then we need to do a better job at stamping out the fucking feral shit. Feral shit should be banned straight up from all furry fucking all, all furry websites, conventions, that shit needs to be fucking removed. Okay? But no, we need to be sex positive. Okay, then get continue to be called a fucking zoophile, because that's what that shit is. Feral, it's it's disgusting. It's 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 be it's drawn. You know how Lolly is like. Uh, wait, how old are you, Tawampus? First of all, I don't recognize you too much. Okay, if you're a minor, you should not be watching this stream. All right, or any stream. Porn of hype. Yeah, porn of hyper realistic animals. Yeah, or not, no, it's just porn of animals, right? It's just it's. Well, no, that's BC, well, it's like how Lolly is drawn. CP. Feral is basically drawn bestiality. That's basically what it is. I have a more. Okay. Brooklyn Nine Nice and I'm okay with racism, but I draw the line of animal cruelty. <laughs> and fictitious. Zoophilia is a present target of this and is largely capitalized on by YouTube and clickbait. Apophenia is a form of cognitive bias whereby a connection is formed between two mostly yeah. unrelated things. Stereotyping is a common example of this. The perception that one bad person Sorry, must imply a connection between things, the rest yeah. of the group. If a furry is represented by their worst attributes or a community is represented by the worst of its people, then there must be a connection there. Rather than chalking up furries like Lucky Coyote or Kira the Wolf to mere coincidence, rare cases amongst literal millions of people, it is finding a correlation with it is none. In a YouTube sphere which constantly regurgitates Well, by and things, large, when Kiro first got outed, the mass majority of the fandom did defend him. That was before the evidence came out, to be fair. But the fact that people's instinct was to immediately defend him and act like he couldn't have done anything fucking wrong instead of being like, well, hold on, what's the evidence? Instead of just asking what the fuck the evidence was, people just blindly defended him. That was the mass majority of the fan. Now, it quickly shifted away from that, but the fact that, that was the fandom's instinct was immediately to protect them, that's, the that's part of the fucking problem, right? Stories and notions, repeated it exposure just shows me cute art. Yeah, like that's that's like to me, that's all that it is. It's just cute art, like whatever it could be, you know, like I don't give a fuck about the porn shit, but it's just like it's just a hobby. Like it's just like, oh, look at this cute little thing, or look at this hot fucking anthropomorphic werewolf thing. Well, whatever the fuck, it, who cares? Right? Like you you being made fun of for that. It's just not it's not the end of the fucking world. Effect. Holy shit. The solution shit. would just, be the break just the chain. Ignore it. Rather than simply regurgitating the story, I would encourage all creators to include the lead on effects into the fandom. A brief summary. Like there's no there's no legislation against furries or from expressing themselves. It's just, just people make fun of them in high school or whatever. Like, community. That is discrimination and untruthful storytelling of events. If you're gonna call yourself a video essayist, I expect the full story, not a perverted version for you to confirm form to your bigoted Ooh. audience unfortunately i don't yet have a shot fired at turkey tom exposure of the fandom and its popularity i feel like i feel like he literally was referencing turkey tom there yeah, I'm a fake furry dude. Negative stereotypes. I cannot say without some doubt that furries are more or less negatively received. According to Fur Science, the vast majority of furries do believe that. I don't even know if Fur Science is entirely in trustworthy. <laughs> like, However, need I remind you that these studies often have to have adults answer the surveys for them. Surveying minors is strictly controlled and oftentimes infeasible. Yeah, I'm Therefore, complicit a substantial in the population of the world to those oh susceptible to the media's attacks, the bullying in school, and the places which we would see furry hate the most they do not have a say in these forms of studies and so too does the framing of the question more favorable does not mean less negative well As an extreme here, here's here, i don't trust the furry science thing because it's done by by an entirely biased group right i would trust it more if it was like a non-profit like completely unrelated organization to like conduct those studies like i don't know if i entirely trust furries to do it right you know
<sighs> First of all, the reason why feral isn't illegal is because there's no laws against drawn zoophilia or yeah, it's the same thing applies to lolly. It's technically like freedom of speech, right? Like it's disgusting. I hate it, but that's what it is. I I, I, I that's generally my stance. I don't think you should ban it like like or not ban it i don't think you should make it illegal because like i don't like the slippery slope that would cause right because like okay you're gonna ban like feral art let's say let's say feral art is now illegal and it's like okay oh that's based right totally based okay lolly is now illegal oh that's entirely based then like violent video games what about violent video games is it illegal to depict murder like shit like that i don't like that slippery slope right but there's nothing wrong with like advocating for like social change, like, you know, for, for, to shake the social structures. Because like, while it's, it's unconstitutional to make legislation that prevents people from expressing themselves, uh, freedom of speech and stuff like that, it's not, it's not against the law to be like, hey, you know, to pressure furry websites to ban feral art. That's not illegal. It's not like they're, they're a private business. They can do whatever the fuck they want, right? Like, so that, that's example, pretty much what I'm saying. Population for. one, we have 10 broadcasts from the year 2010. Each of these broadcasts are in some way negative. In the second population of modern broadcasts, we would see more than, yeah. say, 100 and, broadcasts. Uh, I don't think this the courts the want to deal with those, those cases because of furries, yeah, and literally. Turn the attention to the it would have just been right off as like unconstitutional. Are positive, whilst 90 are negative. Take the averages, and we have a better ratio. I mean, the same the same thing happened in Florida, right? Uh, it's like dealing with the creep creeping process. Yeah, it's just a fucking headache. Um, but the same thing happened with, um, with, uh, you know, Florida, Florida was trying to pass laws that, that would restrict people from like cross-dressing and stuff like that. But the federal, uh, or not the federal, the, uh, the Florida Supreme court upheld it they, or they not upheld it, but they shot it down because it's like, no, that's the violation of the first amendment. Vosh is a zoo, yeah, he's a zoo. Broadcast in the second population. However, a substantially higher number of negative broadcasts. Oh, wait, is in it In the real world, things? media is less black Hold and on, white, so labels of strictly negative chat. and positive don't exactly work. It also depends on the size and demographic of each broadcast. In general, oh, what I consider Vosh is a zoo file? Bullied in high school uh, yeah. that consumes more sophisticated yeah, media would perceive less furry hate than a well, child <laughs> in high school today who is surrounded by... The, the Supreme Court did it begrudgingly. Like, the, Supreme, the Florida Supreme Court... Is largely like you know conservative right they did it begrudgingly right they just kids raised on youtube shorts thus your perception of how furry hate is developed is monumentally influenced by your age your consumed media and your past experiences no matter which way you cut this cake furry hate is an apparent issue and compounding all no, of these it's stresses, not. we finally have an estimated risk factor for furries of which paints a very grim picture of furries and mental health returning to the waikato study another time we have an inference on the effect that these risk factors have i heed caution for viewers who may have trouble with topics such as depression and suicide in this section of the video i will read the core studies of this paper which well, for some actually viewers may be disturbing where you live. yeah like i saw that um 4 percent of participants had attempted suicide once in their life 34 uh okay whatever uh you know trans people have it worse get owned um lolly is illegal depending on where you live the like the incident where the man in australia was arrested for Simpson. what the fuck what that's a thing that happened but yeah i know other other states do it um, but th those other states like Australia, Australia has like heavy restrictions on, on, uh, not heavy restrictions on freedom of speech, but th they, they have a different system and, you know, like Europe, Europe notoriously has like really shitty, like free speech laws. Like you, you could, you could be like fucking sued for, I, I, I would have been sued like 50,000 fucking times if I was in Europe, right. For like the shit that I fucking say. I, but I, I want to be able to fucking say it, right? Of Barton Hill, the fuck? That's disgusting. But yeah. 38 attempt. Or okay, so video, right. 38% attempted suicide. Lifetime, right. with 23.5% attempting at least twice. It was also found that 31.3% of participants uh -huh. had contemplated suicide in the past year. 46.7%. And then what's the fucking average? Hold on. You need to... You, well, let's fucking do... You can't just flash numbers on the fucking screen. What's the... 14%. So it's a little bit over. Suicide rate among males is four times higher than among females. And then 46% thought of it. Participants scored in the clinical range for anxiety. Whilst for oh my God. For anxiety? 41.3% in the clinical range for depression. Dude, it's probably because the majority of furries are fucking autistic. Like, let's be honest. That's probably like 
27.5 and 18.4. Because I'm at, well, let's look that up too. Like the, yeah, 35% have attempted suicide. So that literally lines up perfectly. <laughs> That's, there you fucking go. The vast majority of furries are autistic. They literally are. I'm probably autistic. I don't, I've never got fucking tested, but I'm probably fucking autistic. Like that, it fucking lines up perfectly. There you fucking go. That explains or it easily. The severe range, respectively. This should not be the norm. This is not okay. I would like to include that this is after and it, considering and, and the suicidality support. for autistic people is probably like that because they get fucking picked on. Don't get me wrong. Like obviously, I don't think it's I don't think it's okay to pick on like if it's in high school, like relentlessly bullied a kid for fucking you know being being a furry. Like obviously, I don't think that's okay, right? But like to act like it's like a furry genocide and we're just it's just like black struggles. Like no, it's a complete. That's dude. You're retarded. Factors that furries may have. Anything that could have prevented you such suicide stats. Results. It lines up perfectly. More so, it is incredibly disturbing to acknowledge the preventability of these results. The severe amount of people, human beings, whose lives could have been saved, changed, or improved simply by avoiding such discrimination. Estimates do range on the. It's just okay then. Advocate for like anti-bullying in high schools or whatever the fuck. Like I highly doubt the suicide rate still maintains that that peak in adulthood. Right. Furries in the world, and none are really well sourced either. A commonly sourced estimate by a number of publications is 1.4 to 2.8 million. However, this number is based on a fur science study asking furries how many they think exists. It is impossibly hard to predict accurate numbers, especially considering the subjectivity of the term furry. Let's play with the rounded number of 2 million, as that makes for a reasonable amount of sense in my eyes. In 2015, one of the largest furry like more than sites for affinity furries. reported having 1.2 million active users as one of the only furries in my entire friend group to even have an inactive account on there i can say with certainty wait 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 on fur affinity dude should we go visit that should, i want to see i want to see what he likes on fur affinity <laughs> fur oh my god uh i probably can't show this on stream right fur affinity god damn it dude yeah no nah, i can't show this on stream all right <laughs> but let's see okay his name is uh what is that squiggly clapped seal huh why isn't that showing up for affinity you just have very low standards on what is and isn't yeah literally i mean that's furries in general dude i used, I used to go to a convention uh like a local furry convention and stuff like that it was like pretty decently sized um it used to be like right now it's it's 18 plus because literally like the Florida law is like demand like it's like you cannot run this convention and it has to be 18 plus if you're gonna fucking run it which I say based um but before that before the law it was like open to like all ages and stuff like that I have a video on my channel literally talking about it like um yeah there would just be like fetish shit just openly and there would be like fucking teenagers walking by I'm like what the fuck is happening like yeah like it's disgusting Dude, but his thing is not showing up. Clap. Seal. The fuck? I want to see what he likes on Fur Affinity, dude. What? How do I search accounts? Can I search accounts? Whatever. But the Fur Affinity is very interesting, though. Population. Add on to that, in recent Act times, Fur Affinity got bullied by furries because of Shadow and everyone fucked his wife This comes after obscure moderation choices dude, and poor that's ethical real discrimination. guidelines. Moreover, eight years has been given for this number to increase. To put that in perspective, Midwest Fur Fest has gone from 5,606 attendees in 2015 to over 15,000 in 2023. By all accounts, 2 million is likely underestimating the real statistic. I would personally place the fandom at over 5 million however many may class such a figure as generous so for those skeptics out there we will have to meet at the middle at 2 million that would equate I to 768,000 furries having contemplated suicide in the last year according to save.org roughly 125 of these suicide attempts were successful that equates to 30,000 what you trying to hide clap seal Whether what are you trying to hide buddy? or at all close to realistic I can I don't I don't think there's probably I don't think there's any like zoophilic shit on there maybe issue. 
an issue out, that does not, not come without but consequence and a drastic consequence that is an estimated over 700 I just wanted to see if there's people anything die from that suicide each year roughly three since i've started this video 30,000 over the course of decades does not seem implausible however grim that might sound it may even be more of those 38.4 of participants that attempted suicide in their lifetime 23.5 had tried again increasing the likelihood of successful attempts arguably the darkest part is who couldn't answer this survey those who succeeded in their attempts this data only accounts for those alive to answer those who weren't successful yeah so the rate is lower so like like that would be a completely different stat right obviously for like successful fucking suicides i think right because usually how it goes is like you have like you know it's like a pyramid right like the bottom the most people um who are comprised of you know people who have thought of suicide or have had suicidal thoughts this the portion above that would be like people who have like attempted suicide and like the very peak would be like the people who have like successfully so it would be like a lower number right i don't know why he's acting like it would be a bigger when i'm number. asked why i care so much about this fandom i often answer with how are you content i don't come here to simply commentate on furries and i leave i wake up with the day staring me down a world so often unresponsive and indifferent to oh my god he actually acts like he's an oppressed <laughs> fucking class of people <laughs> my struggles day to day that dude his struggles his struggles oh my god he should write a book called my struggle in place upon me and it just so happens that thousands of people cannot cope with that burden that's how i know that there it's is called getting the fuck over it people hate, find you weird on the internet get hate. over it this percentage these lives bigotry can stab a person in the heart being a furry just rubs salt into the wound. I mean, here's a take <laughs> on the sub-minority of queer culture. They share similarities, but they are distinct in many ways. Calling them Actually, he literally acts like he's Martin Luther, bro. That make furries distinct. Yes. So far, we've investigated where furry hate comes from, the forms in which discrimination shows, and the effects on the mental health of furries. We have identified that the problem exists further than just a simple definition of sub-minority. So before we consider more extreme labels and progress any further, we should ask one fundamental question. He had a dream, bro. A label to the fandom in the first place. We understand furry hate is there, and we recognize its effects. Surely we can tackle it without identifying where furry's place as a group. I disagree. And that relates back to what I discussed earlier, how an outsider's perspective is clouded when presented with a lack of definitions. As furries, we can already differentiate between groups of people within the fandom. A third party or a powerful figure that could benefit furries may not see the situation so clearly. If a third party were to ask what is a furry how would we be able to answer their question uh degenerate weirdo boom easy it is integral that we are able to provide understanding on the issues at hand a lack of definition can be misleading when juxtaposed to a heavy scrutiny in the mass level of terrible stories that are perpetuated online take the 2018 zusatis leaks as an example when furries dude that shit made me hate furries i i started being a furry around uh 2020 dude but when those zusatis leaks i was like fucking i was like these people need to be Dude, I was, I was, I was genocidal, bro. I was discriminatory towards the furry class, okay? I was like, these people need to be marched into the forest, dude. I fucking, I hated, like, all furries when that fucking shit dropped. But, like, the, the fact that I could come from that and, like, be a furry, right, shows, like, it's really not that bad. Like, it, it really cannot be that fucking bad where we see a tragic situation involving several non-furries, but more importantly, furries who we trusted, friends, acquaintances, whatever. People now, who ran websites. And look again. People, An people who ran websites and got protected by other groups, furries, right? Furries and zoophiles, the latter being more common than the former. As an outsider, it is understandable how one could be left uninformed on the differences between and the people that and the people that protected and defended these people are still walking around and aren't completely fucking ostracized by the community kind of weird leave with a tainted view on the furry population of course as most furries would likely explain the differences between furries and zoophiles are vast without their added context That's definitions true. forming distinctions between the two groups is less likely to be made causing possibly dangerous conclusions of course we know that no such preventions were ever made instead the much more marketable anti-furry clickbait was abused resulting in shooter had a furry affinity information. Account, yeah. labels are necessary 
necessary and they are fundamental in prevention of further discrimination. All of which brings me to one last social factor in considering further labels. Who would I be affecting through the wording of my conclusion? This is a question of ethics and a question I asked in a community post if it was insensitive or wrong to label the furry fandom as a minority group. People were mixed on the question. Admittingly, the wording Wait, what's of the my majority? Wait, 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 what's the majority? Depends on the context. Well, I mean, yeah, obvious, obviously, the fact as vague as possible. So it depends on the context being the most popular response makes sense. But all of that, like, if you if you consider a minority as like anybody that isn't the majority, then yeah, sure, technically they are a major, they, they are a minority. Exactly like, necessary. I was only testing for one thing. My concern comes from the nineteen percent of people who either answered yes or a little bit. That was a whole nineteen percent of the entire vote, or about four hundred and fifty people. What risk would I'd be playing and answering the question to that amount of people. It is a genuine concern that I must take into account when analyzing what the term what? means. What? It's just a, you're a, a fucking YouTuber, dude. The fuck? Or some already he actually thinks he's Martin Luther King. If I were to lump furries into a similar category, it's like, oh my god, we need to like march in the streets. We need to go to Washington. Went through. I may be ignoring any historical context which allowed these groups to constitute <laughs> the need term a, minority. We need to. I can need to thinking. I'm queer myself, and it's going to take a bit of. We need to fucking. We need to. What you call it? We need to like uh what is it what is it? i guess what, what do you call it? we need a trot we need a trot to washington barks and owls around that and come to a conclusion that satisfies all parties. When I asked my community what they thought about labeling furries as a minority group, nearly all of the minute. comments yeah, identified yapping, the term bro. was insensitive to already established minority groups. Why is this? What exclusivity comes from the label minority that separates it from other conventional definitions? Through my comments and my own uh, what game is this? I it's Devil May Cry 5. I just have it modded. Severity, innateness, and choice. Let's address those in reverse order as they significantly affect our conclusion. Choice. Does the label minority allow fluctuation between identifying and not? This is a tricky one, and before we even question the fluidity about the term minority, what about furries? Do you choose to be the a furry? Dog is yapping. Is the Yo, yes, by true. external factors. He's My barking. personal belief puts bro, furries into barking, a sort of gray area when it comes to choice. Let me explain it this way. If being a furry was a choice, people choose to be here with the freedom to decide otherwise. Yeah, Why literally. Why do we exist? Literally. Why would we- I'm a furry? I don't associate with the furry fandom, right? I don't. I don't. Like, I refuse to go to conventions. I'm done with that fucking shit. I don't want to be a part of the discords. I don't want to be around these fucking people anymore. <laughs> sharks are considered dogs. Yeah, true. Willingly sign Especially ourselves bull. up for this. Especially Why is anthropomorphism sharks. so prominent in human history? Why does it feel like a requirement for some people's expression and to just function? Oh. Should furries even experience a feeling of true self if furry was just true a choice? It's a I'm fucking hobby! I'm not saying that there isn't any fluidity in how you choose to identify as a furry or not. What I'm saying is that social influences may play more of a role than we think. LGBT as a safe space is one example for sure, but more significantly, I would turn to cult Cognitive factors such as autism and anxiety, which use anthropomorphism as a sort of tool for compensation. Oh, so he acknowledges. Wait, so he knows. Okay, so yeah, I'm not good. I'm not a bigot for literally saying most furries are fucking autistic. Okay, the motherfucker said himself. Themselves through a furry character, something that is incredibly it's beneficial like to both. Dude, that shit is so fucking annoying. I, I see, I see a lot of furries do that. It's like, dude, furry is like literally a part of my identity. I could, I, I can't go a single day without mentioning that I'm a furry. It's like, it's so stupid. It's just communities this could be what it's no different from like the incessantly gay people it's like i'm so gay i'm so gay i'm so queer i like guys i like boys i like men i like i, like, I, I fucking hate that shit By the furry so fandom cringe. is often utilized to identify one's true self it is a vessel for like human expression cares. and a tool for social behavior to get all pretentious and quote i would say Oscar being a gay Wilde. isn't a choice isn't a choice because like you can't you can't necessarily choose like the circumstances that you grew up in that sort of have the, the sexuality form inside of you. Um, but something like a furry, it's like, you can, probably, arguably, it's not necessarily a choice, but you choose to participate in the, you choose, you choose to associate with furries. That is a choice. You choose to associate that with, with that, right? That's something that you do choose. So as least himself, it's not the same thing. Talks in his own person. Give him a mask, and he will tell you the truth. Right? Like black, like black people can't choose not to, to not associate with black people. Like it's it's inherent. It's literally in your genes, right? Like, and you're likely being born into a community of other black people, right? And you're naturally you're naturally bonding with other black people. Like you like you you can't choose not to be black. Like sorry, Michael Jackson, but you cannot choose not to be black. 
mask, but in turn sacrifice a piece of what makes them whole, a part of their true like self. actual species. Oh my many fucking god! Within. That would be like the end of the world, dude. If 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 aliens came down to Earth and they were furries, like that's that's it, dude. That's it. Like, it's over. It's literally over. Like. They would, they would, they would see, they would see like the furry fan and be like, dude, we need to like, <laughs> I declared exterminatus. We need to, we need to cleanse this planet. Like, <laughs> the clue is that you have to be born into a minority. I feel if furries, if furries, act, if they, furries actually existed as a species, they would hate humans. They would fucking would hate humans. that you're dude. not born into what makes a furry, but you're born into the factors that influence that decision. On it's the not the same hand, as a sexuality. Like, you could be like, yeah, I like anthro stuff. Anthro stuff is cool, but like, I'm not a furry, right? And that would be like, yeah. Being a furry means you associate with the furry fandom or like you, you, you have a large interest in furry content, right? Or you have an interest in furry content, right? That's basically what that fucking means. Like, you, I mean, I guess you probably, you know, maybe he is right that you can't necessarily choose it, but it's not, it's not the same fucking thing, right? Like, I'm sure, I'm sure someone who likes, uh, you know, shooting guns, right? It's kind of hard for someone living in a country where like it's illegal to shoot firearms. Like they probably wouldn't have that hobby, right? They probably wouldn't grow up to that. But if you grew up in like a very gun culture society or gun culture family, like my, my family is like pretty like heavy on guns. Like I, I feel like, I feel like it's not a choice for me to not like guns. I fucking love guns. I've always loved guns. I, that wasn't a choice. Am I, am I a fucking class of people now? Like I didn't choose not to like, I didn't choose to like guns, right? Like, dude, coming out as a furry is like coming out as an anime fan. Yeah, literally, furries are never to, dude, furries and weaves are literally the same, they're the same level of degenerate. Like, are, 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 are weaves like, oh, I identify as a Hokage. Like, what? No. Shut the fuck up. It's a fucking hobby, bro. As color people and LGBT people, yeah. Through history it's and literally society, not the same thing. we tell our stories from the perspective of anthro animals. We give toys of anthro animals to children, and we use these anthro animals as Dude, a vessel. Dude, Native Americans were the original Just furries. At history in a weird term of phrase. It may be more Dude, human. Dude, I was. I'm part. inherently a furry. I'm part native, right? Apparently, according to my grandma, like I'm a part of some fucking tribe. I, I completely forgot what it was, but. Dude, uh, I'm. I'm. I'm spiritually. I'm. Ethic, uh, ethnically a furry animal historically speaking I will be a Hokage one day. <laughs> developed their own interpretations of anthropomorphism Egyptians revered the lion as a god I'm gonna the be a real super sand half human half canine ancient Indian deity Ganesha is attributed with the head of an elephant the Dude, Hebrew text Haggadah features the Buddhists were fucking furries bro what Jewish men women and children you may even turn to these ancient Japanese scrolls of frolicking animals featuring as described what's going on here why is there a reoccurring pattern and what does it tell us about anthropomorphism i can't say for sure i only understand what is displayed in front of me which it's is an artistic expression it's supposed to be representative to be like Conclu like like some like someone in the past would be like oh this person is very agile they or they they move like a snake or like fly like a butterfly sting like a bee like that's like the anthropomorphism. like it's representative it's art it's an artistic expression that's all that it is is unlocking his third eye. Yeah, literally. This is not significant enough to ignore choice factors in furry self-identification. Thus, the clause of innate and choice cannot be Jalen determined with a high satisfaction. <laughs> Ahead At of the current curb. stage, yeah. I have no conclusive defense against comments which argue either position. I understand that that can result in a heated debate. Some furries may feel as though they were born with this furry trait, and others may think that's ludicrous. It's all part of a conversation that just may be saved for a better day. In a future where there's more information, there is, however, one final clause that can be more easily determined. Severity. Does the label of minority constitute a severity of discrimination or historical context? Whilst anthropomorphism has existed for tens of thousands of years, the community of furry has only existed since early 1980, a fraction of the time. Therefore, we lack the history found in other minority groups. Those groups have already established themselves as a minority far before furries came to exist. Even though furries have existed for longer than many of its inhabitants, and hilariously many of its antagonists as well this pales in comparison to other established groups clause one minority is a uh, special term saying granted to don't emphasize like severity don't... What i the ask fuck? you to okay. recall one of the first examples i gave in this video that of the holocaust and reappropriation <laughs> there we go labor. again what the fuck dude i'm like half paying attention hold on what does he say
Oh. This pales in comparison to other established groups. Clause 1. Minority is a special term granted to emphasize severity. I ask you to recall one of the first examples I gave in this video. That of the Holocaust and reappropriation of yeah. certain labels. I believe that this case provides insight into why furries aren't classed as a minority group. The Holocaust was granted a certain speciality to it. Signifying- Dude, yeah, but like Jews still existed before the fucking Holocaust, right? They didn't need the Holocaust to happen for Jews to be like a, a fucking group of a minority class. Like- I'm willing to bet if the furry fandom caught wind of this video, they would uh they wouldn't think Clapsu. No, yeah, one thousand percent, they would defend him. One thousand fucking percent, because like most furries are like, I would say most furries are like normal everyday people. They would probably look at this video and be like, they would probably think the same thing. It's like, dude, it's not that big of a deal. But like, there there's like a decent portion of the fandom that are just like, no, yeah, I'm special, every way, shape, or form. I'm so unique and quirky. Like, it's cancer. Yeah, I love importance. this game, yeah. So too does the term minority. It is a stature of hate and oppression. It is a badge of honor to signify your persistence. Calling furries the bro, same I'm as epic, to call bro. any other genocide a holocaust. It fits the definition, sure, but it runs a direct comparison to the harsher equivalent, an undermining severity that was set during the reappropriation of the word minority. Whether there actually is some innate psychological force which play a role in anthropomorphic expression, the exclusivity of minority group does doesn't ever seem to fit furries. This dilemma is a catch-22. No matter how we cut this metaphorical cake, it doesn't feel right to class furries as a minority group. It could fit any definition for minority which you throw at it, but can never beat this final clause. Even though the sources from which I derive a lot of this information from use the term minority onto furries. The Waikato study fixates about furries being a minority group. The tool that they use to identify the support and risk factors is called the Maya Minority Model of Stress. It is beneficial to look at this community through a minority lens, but it can be unethical to title it as such. What does this mean for our label? Is there a method of labeling which allows for models such as mayors to be utilized regardless of the strict minority label? In other words, can we label furries as something other than minority but still look at them through the same lens? Through no, it's a fucking hobby! Of answer, according Dude. to myself, I would like to emphasize it's that a hobby. I'm not a professional and therefore my words should not be taken as the complete truth. How I interpret the situation will be different from other people as this is based on my own belief. I believe a well-inclusive label for the furry community is an emergent minority what? with sub-minority characters. An emerging minority! Oh my god, dude. You're categories. cringe! We have sub-minority, which considers the LGBT roots and the issues as well as the popular... Oh, let's fucking go! That was sick, actually. By the restriction of tools vital in the oh benefit of mentally impaired communities. Thus, there is a primary and a secondary minority system that was that fucking that awesome, bro. <laughs> I've never done LGBT, that before. Secondary ableism. Furthermore, the emergent minority considers differences and discrimination that separate the furry fandom from these other minority groups, in particular those which comprise the sub-minority section. I chose the word emergent because of the rising population of furries and the recency of the fandom. Dude, if history like, is an important furries literally in infest like everything that has to do with like computer science and animation. Like, fuck. Ah! Oh my god. My main problem is that uh, I suck at building the engine gauge with the perfect input timing. Forgot what? Oh, oh, for like, um, yeah, uh, it, it's just, it's just muscle memory, like, yeah. Uh, wait, are we discussing whether or not furries are a minority? I think they're just hobby. Yeah, literally. Uh, what does the Holocaust have to do with furries? Dude, it's like the same thing, dude. Every time a furry, like, kills themselves from being, like, picked on, it's the same thing as, like, a Jew being thrown into a gas chamber. In factor in what considers a minority. It's fundamentally the same thing. A lack of history that is currently in its youth. The term does its job at communicating a form of minority, thus allowing for examinations through a minority lens, whilst also conveying where furries place in relation to these other groups. I'd like to reiterate that this term is not perfect. It is made to simplify a problem and create a more generic understanding of a social group. A social group which does require some degree of assistance. In part, 
this term is meant to progress my oh, own understanding of this fandom, to rationalize our place in the world and to envision a progressive future that, that accommodates furries into society. I spent a considerable Wait, fucking... amount oh, my of time shit, conveying fuck. my reasoning for this term, the effects that discrimination has on this community and the consequences that we face. If you believe that there isn't an issue, then I don't have anything to say to you. What I hope mostly is to incorporate Ooh. these terms and definitions into how we market talk about the Palestinian genocide. Let's talk about the real genocide. The furry how genocide. we progress yeah. moving forward. That is why I highlight defining such concepts under key importance. Uh, because it is important that we understand who we are. And this isn't happening in all dude, the key places where it needs I to am be. A fur fag Schools at are supposed to provide safety, but equally they should supply education. Education that I feel is not being met. During a sociology class, an interesting instance a crap of furries was brought up. And the reaction uh, from both my teacher and the students signified to me yeah. where the weak points in our system lay. Furries so. appeared in a presentation about social groups. The teacher presenting it was struck with confusion and asked the entire class, are furries those people who dress like animals? who then promptly erupted into laughter. Not by the teacher's word was anything wrong, but the lack thereof. The inability to recognize a prominent social group which I know catered to several kids in that class, including me. She left herself to the whim of high school students. A blank canvas for This is a fucking high school class! You act like it's a fucking goddamn Instagram college lecture! ...out loud during break. I know the content which many of them consume, and I know how that content perceives me. I am blessed with the fortune to be happy with my identity. Yeah, I have an audience of encouraging subscribers in an online group of friends that I have an audience that of sick just me. And tell I me I'm wrong. Uh, tell me, tell me I'm right first. about everything. Yet I can also rationalize that others are burdened with far far worse and i know the comfort that can be made when an authoritative figure shows their support an Education authoritative the figure you're a fucking youtuber dude Actually tells your story without you having to say i anything. hate youtubers like you this that actually act like they're fucking like they're hot shit speak, like oh yeah i make youtube videos I and i have okay, a but i have videos over uh 300,000 views on it like big fucking deal bro. society of course it is far from you're the not an method. authority I find figure education you're to be just a dude powerful on the resource, internet but this can be provided through many different mediums hey it would be almost poetic to have the media help fix the issue when they were the one who have large stakes in creating wait no, Media. wait, like, it's not a joke. He l actually thinks he's, like, a significant figure in the furry fandom. Like, he actually thinks he's, like, a furry historical figure. It like, can be broken down into two main categories. Traditional and social media. Traditional would tackle those pesky news broadcasts. Dude, TV Turkey shows, Tom is radio, just, newspaper, just, um... And media typically directed towards older populations. He's like the Abraham, Abraham Lincoln of furries. And, like, you know, Turkey Tom's is John Wilkes Booth. Internet. You can target these stories. You can request specific information and get better information to these broadcasts a lot easier or at least the target to direct your request towards is a lot more clear and specific social media is strange because there is a lot of it and usually i would say the treatment yeah. for social media comes as a byproduct to everything that. else because the people on social media are just that people so if they are educated through school and traditional media to be accepting towards furries their statement should echo that the only other way i feel you could tackle the problem of misinformation is to control those alt-right rabbit holes that have caused events like right, bro, I fell down the alt-right rabbit hole and I came out as a furry. The fuck? Sort of crack down on those echo chambers. Is it really that much of a problem? Speech. Otherwise, to tackle furry hate, you could be doing what furries are already doing. Existing. MLF, yeah, you are providing that alternative to the negative. I briefly touched on this in a previous video, and I feel like I need to emphasize this statement further. I think a lot of people need to hear this. You are doing enough just by existing. You have complete freedom to metaphorically hang up your hat and fucking retire. The world already appreciates your existence. Oh my god, yes, yes. The, the world appreciates furries yes that's oh my god so true kid. the legacy that you form simply by waking up simply in the by the legacy you form like, you have to do bullshit, something with your you fucking life bro in order waking up that, and right? choosing to exist is a revolt against discrimination and that yes. is powerful enough to make you Dude, work so powerful yes king it may not feel like it my message should not right, be rabbit hole, uh, apathy. for a few months apathy now i'm a bisexual it's the pipeline yeah, to the... be nothing and to be miserable but waking up is something and throwing up a middle fingers one more despite everything the statistics the discrimination the hate the most optimistic thing to know is that we're moving in a positive direction and if you're anything like me learning about the world that you live in makes it feel a lot more like home so here's the learning about Aww. this fandom and everything that makes it so great Fuck. thank you all for watching i'll see you losers next time peace damn bro my life has fundamentally changed after watching that video
Dude, now I'm in a press class of, of people, dude. I've literally been discriminated against so much for being a furry. I've had like people be like, "You fuck dogs." I'm like, dude, you're like you're like throwing me into my own personal gas chamber right now.